Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, Late AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on everywhere. Man, we're on YouTube Live, we're on LinkedIn Live, we're on Facebook Live, but I gotta tell you, I love this because this is where plumbers come to talk, meaning we have people that wanna get into the trades, people that are in the trades and wanna get better. So you're a journeyman, you wanna become a really great journeyman or maybe even move up to a master. Maybe you're a residential service plumber and you've decided it's time for you to open your own business or you already own your own business and you wanna learn to use social media to help you grow. So we talk all things plumbing. We have a great community here. We have people that get in here that are in the trades, people that wanna get in the trades, people that have been in the trades for years. And I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite days of the week. I really, I enjoy what we get to do and the way we get to do it. And it really is pretty cool. So I'm gonna look up here in the comments. Man, we've already got people in the house. Got Gaston, 4780, UHRX ZA, how we doing? Poop Locker Dane, hope that's Locker. Uh, man, I can't pronounce your name. Hello, how are you? Charles Venner, greetings to everyone from Davenport, Iowa. Good to see you in here. Serge Shamray, Roger, how do you figure out which trade is right for you? Now, we are going to talk about that and so much more today. Uh, Mike Hadfield and everybody else, if y'all want to ask questions up at the top, at least in certain places, there is a link to the forum. And I think Lila's in here, or I, I see Lila's in here. Great to have you. Lila Lasagna, how are you doing? Uh, here's the cool thing is that hopefully Liz will put a link to the form in here, pin it up to the top. I know that I think I did that on the YouTube page. We may have to do it over on other places, but great seeing everybody in here right now. Uh, Serge, we will talk about that. I promise. How is everyone today? Austin, we are doing great. Josh Baxter, good to see you in here. Neil, the Urban Explorer. Guys, that's a channel that if you're not subscribed to, you need to check it out. Neil does, man, living in a van, the van life, and how to build that van. Really some great stuff. I love watching what he does. Joe Mario says, want to let you know, got a toilet from Ferguson. Shipping was quick, even though the tank and bowl were shipped separate. You know, they, they normally are pretty quick, and sometimes the reason they ship things separate, one supply house may have had the tank, the other one had the bowl, one could have got broken in transit, whatever it is. So there's a lot of different reasons. We sometimes get packages shipped in from other places. So Amber, thank you so much. Amber, make sure I stay hydrated, y'all, uh, which is a good thing. By, by the time I get in here and go for two and a half hours, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, so Joe, that's why they do it. Starian, uh, how do you plumb your mustache? Uh, don't have to, man. It does itself. CIA, that's just a stupid comment, but hey, is what it is. Uh, Matt McDonough, hey, Mr. Miyagi of Plumbing, I am doing great. Daniel Laf Lafada, how are you? When are all materials going to be restocked? Man, that's a good one. Uh, Manicana God, here's what I'll tell you is the... I guess I'm going to move this. I don't really need that. we got to find a way to get this board here closer to me. Uh, the, the cool thing is things are starting to stock back up. And you know we've had a lot of plumbers come in from around the country to get in here to Texas, get a little bit closer and, and help us out, which is great. The really cool thing about it is a lot of these guys were bringing materials and things like that with them. That helps a lot because... Man, we were running out of everything. So it really mm -hmm. is great to see all the help, all the support from the plumbing community. But Manikin of God, I got to tell you, I think things are getting stocked back up quicker than we thought they would. Luckily for me, man, I was uh, I kind of saw this coming. So I ordered some materials out of California just because I knew that they would get here quicker. Uh, plumber man with mustache. I think we have real Mario here, boy, and that's the truth. Isaac White says, with the boss hiring me as an apprentice and using their excavator as well as transporting it to from job to job site, can I ask for more money? Here's the thing, Isaac, if you're bringing more value to the company you work for, you can always ask for more money. Doesn't mean you'll get it, 
but it's definitely worth asking. And Neil says, don't forget to use the link at the top of the chat for questions, meaning most of the questions that I answer are going to be in the form. Every now and then, I will jump over into the chat just to see who all's in here, what all's going on, things like that. But to, to be honest, what we're going to do, if you've seriously got pops uh, or, or seriously got questions, jump into the form, ask it there. That's where I go through and really make sure that I do that. Uh, got a rug, rugby league fan from England. Look, it's great. Uh, Neil the Urban Explorer, also over in the UK. Hope y'all are doing great. Ald says, when it's windy, my pops creak. Not sure why. All my pops are enclosed inside my house, and there's no open holes that may allow wind to come through. Well, actually, when there's an atmospheric change or the wind blowing or stuff, it does. It gets in your vents. And a lot of that stuff sticking out the top may move around and may cause it to make noise. So there are ways that it could still make noise. Kenneth Waters, good to see you, brother. Great having you in here. Martin Duchette has, says, hello, we have a new plumber construct or a new construction plumber from South Florida. You know, it, and it's so funny because everybody hated Florida last week because, or I guess the week before, you know, y'all are having 80 degrees and we're below zero. So hats off to you. I love it down there. Neil says, 13 away from a milestone. Uh, I'll tell you what, Neil, number one, your, your channel's great. Guys, if y'all are in here and you hadn't done it yet, jump over to Urban Explorer, subscribe to his channel. He does some great stuff, but don't just subscribe. Go over there and watch some of his videos. You know, of course, after we're done here. Uh, and, and actually, we made a change today, too. For the last few years, we've been posting at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're changing things starting today. We're starting to post at 545 in the evening. So any of y'all that are like, hey, Roger, I've been looking for your video today. It's not here. We've changed our post time. It's going to be 545. We're doing that for a reason. It's not just a, a random, hey, we didn't make it today. So just want to let y'all know, don't freak out. We are still posting today. It will be at 545. And I will remind everybody as soon as this video is over, you know, go over there, check that out. Uh, and hopefully, if you like it, share it. And that'll help us do good things. So this is great. Uh, Serge Chamray says, I found your channel through that collaboration you did with CoffeeZilla. Awesome interview. Look, I, I, man, I love what he does, number, number one. Uh, he calls people out for doing things wrong, and I think that's great. Uh, boss number one, my boss, happy Monday. Good to have be with y'all today. And boss number two, Amber. So both my bosses are in the house, so I really have to do good today. I'm going to jump over in the forum. So guys, if you have any questions, please go to the top, click the link, go over into the forum, and I'm going to see. I can probably do this, this, and that. And I think that I can just come over here and stick it in here. Paya. So there we go. Uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm over into the forum, guys, answering questions here. So if you have a question, please click on that link that I just put in. Click on the link on top, wherever you're at, and go into the forum. Fill that out, and I am more than happy to answer your plumbing questions. Lana Reyna says, could you give me work? Uh, I have my apprentice license, been working residential plumbing for three years, live in Plano, have my own tools and truck. Uh, Here's what I would tell you is, and, and I sent you an email back earlier because I saw your message. Contact Amber at Texas Green Plumbing. Uh, you can call her. You can Google it. Uh, our phone number is 972-442-4101. Uh, if you're in the Plano area, you're in our service area. I'd like to talk to you, figure out your experience and stuff like that. But we've got a complete interview process we go through. And we were actually talking about that in the video earlier. So it's kind of funny. So, man, fill it out or give Amber a call and we will see what we can do. Craig Close 
It says, hi again, Roger from England. I know your opinion on shark bite fittings, but I was wondering what is your opinion on the compression fittings on a gas pipe where you use a power tool to compress the fitting into the pipe? I, I got to tell you, look, I, I love Pro Press. I love a lot of the PEX piping. I think people need to oversize it to keep from creating a flow restriction. I think that Upanor is phenomenal. Uh, compression fittings I love. There's, uh, I just saw a deal the other day about a new product they're doing in Japan. Actually, you slide a nut on pipe, you stick it in, it swells up the pipe, and this thing just kind of twist locks and then has a key to lock it so it can't come out. And I got to tell you guys, there's some new products coming out that I think are phenomenal. And I'm not one of these people that are just against new materials. I'm one of these people against push fittings like shark bites that, that I've seen blow apart and leak. I've gone in and fixed too many repairs on them. So those are the kind of products I'm against. But I got to tell you, uh, compression fittings have always worked really, really well. Still over in the forum answering questions, Charles Campbell, how are you doing today? How do I become a plumber's apprentice? And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because I've got a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that tell you step-by-step -step how to do that. The first thing that I would recommend doing would be going to my free mini course and figuring out what kind of plumber do you want to be? Do you want to be residential or commercial? New construction or service? Union or non-union? And I ask a ton of questions in there to help people figure that out. And Brandon Keith basically asked the same thing. What you need to be a plumber? What are the qualifications from high school diploma? Do you even need one? Uh, where to learn to be a plumber at? And, and Brandon Keith, exact same answer that I just gave Charles. I've got a ton of videos that go through all this. Here's what I recommend is take the free mini course first. Find out what kind of plumber you want to be. That's going to help you out a ton. And if you'll do that, it, it really is a big deal. And of course, Julie says, hello to Neil. All right. Blake Drury, welcome back. Good to have you in here. After 10 minutes in the shower, it trips the breaker on in the UK. It trips the switch. What should I do? If, if 10 minutes in the shower is tripping your water heater, you've probably got some kind of a load demand that's causing it to trip. And I don't know what type of breakers y'all have and things like that, but I would look at possibly changing the breaker out. It may have tripped so many times it's not a good breaker and needs to be replaced. And, and if you'll do that, I promise you it'll help you out. Answering questions in the forum today. Scott Hayden, how we doing? Says, are you having trouble keeping up with demand for plumbing repairs right now since the hard freeze in Texas? And I'm going to tell you, yeah, it's not just that we're having trouble keeping up with the demand. We're, we're having trouble with materials uh, and, and we're starting to get things caught up. So it's not as bad as it could be. But what I'll tell you is that it literally, we've got enough plumbers, I think now we've got still got plumbers coming in from around the country asking what they can do to help. And those of y'all, there is a link in the description to my free mini course. That's what I put this up here for. Uh, I hope that helps y'all out. It'll, uh, it'll definitely help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. So I think that after the first week or two, we finally caught most of the big problems up. The phones are still ringing. So we still have people that hadn't got completely taken care of yet. And a lot of these things are people that are things that plumbers went in and just did a temporary fix or the homeowner did. So there's a lot of things that we need to do to help make things right for people. But jumped around. Hello to Sean Strong in the house. And, and Sean's right. Let's get some more people over to the subreddit. There's a link right there. Roger Wakefield posts. Here's what's cool about this. This is where you can go in and put in your pictures and videos of great plumbing or horrible plumbing. And this is where we go through and get stuff to make videos with. And it really has been good. Uh, I love this too. Matthew Ladier, how are you? Love the vids and your humor towards shoddy plumbing. And I hate to say it, and I do, I make fun of it and I laugh. 
But man, I hate seeing shoddy plumbing. Man, plumbers just, man, some of the stuff just blows my mind. Uh, oh, there we go. Thanks. Then skin Steve says in England, they have point of use heater at the shower head. Oh, wow. So yeah, you definitely need to figure out what's tripping it. Cause there's not a hot water left over. Not a lot. Back over in the forum guys. Dave Baker says, what is the recommended amount of skill for building my own cabin? I would tell you this, uh, you know, and, and I, I want to say this, right? Because normally I would say you probably want to have a lot of skill because you're talking carpenter, electrician, framer, plumber, HVAC tech. You're talking all these different skills. Here's what I'll tell you. I saw a news special about a lady and her four children that built their own house. And they did an amazing job. And my thought is, look, if they can get on YouTube and watch videos and learn how to do it, so can you. So, man, try it. And, man, I, I think it's a great opportunity. I wish that I had the land and the time that I thought that I could do it. Liam Cook says, I'm a freshman plumber this year. I like that. Liam, where are you going to school at? Where are you learning plumbing? Uh, just out of curiosity. And Tchaikovsky says, I'm 43 years old. Is it too late to learn the trade? No, it is not. Uh, I had an apprentice. You know, I used to teach in the union. And that's why I love teaching people. I, I love teaching plumbing. I, I teach people how to get into the trades. I teach people how to become a better tradesman, meaning are you a tradesman, a journeyman, or a master, and you just want to get better. And I teach people how to do that. I teach people that are a good journeyman or master that want to open their own company, the steps that they need to do and go through the process to do that. And then I teach residential service company owners how to use the power of social media to grow their business. So the neat thing about it is, look, when I was in the union instructing, I had an apprentice who was 55 years old. He was a hard worker. He was a good guy. And he learned. If you think you can do it, chances are you probably can. If you think you can't and you've already made up your mind, chances are you're right. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Boy, I've never heard that before. Uh, thank you for your helping answer. Thank you for helping answer these questions. Yeah, these are amazing work. I'll tell you what, uh, I, I love this because we've got great people in here. I don't have to answer every question. There are other really good people in here that answer them a lot, and that's wonderful. That's a great thing about the chat. If you ask questions in here, other people will help answer it. So it really is pretty cool. Back over into the forum. Michael Lyons says, hey, Roger, I'm from England. We have two variations of Stimson wrench, red being steel, gray being aluminum. What are the green ridges made out of? Uh, great question. These green ridges are actually steel. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not going to pick them up because I'm not supposed to be lifting a lot of weight with my right hand. But these are actually just red steel pipe wrenches I went in and painted. And I did that because I wanted a, a different looking pipe wrench for pictures. And my company is called Texas Green Plumbing. And if y'all hadn't looked it up, go, go, go search Plumbing Dallas, Texas, and scroll down to where Texas Green Plumbing comes up and click on it and go in there and look around. Because I'm telling you, I have an amazing SEO person and website designer, and he's done some really good things. I mean, think about it. I'm not a very big company, but if you go search Dallas, Texas plumbing, normally I come up on page one and that really is a pretty cool deal. But the green pipe wrench helps me with all my branding. Dave says, what can I use to get rid of mineral deposits on the shower control valve? Also, oh, so I can replace that unit. Um, if it's on the outside of it, it's going to be hard to get rid of. You might be able to squirt it down with like a vinegar or something. If you've got a shower head that has mineral buildups, you can actually soak it in vinegar and it'll clear up a lot of the calcium and magnesium. 
So there's different things that you can do like that to help. I don't know if it'll spring it. will soak it down enough that it'll clean enough where you can get the cartridge out or not. But I really would think that it would. Next. Jeremy Means. I've learned a lot from you, and I was considering adding on-demand under-the-sink water heaters for my wife's sink and was wondering if you had any electrical ones that you recommend and would you recommend that or retrofitting to have a recirculation system. My area water is very expensive. I get it. And it is getting more so due to the Great Lakes Water Alliance to mitigate high radium in the water. Here's what I would tell you is, and, and Jeremy, th this is my thought process. If you can put in a circulation pump that has a valve that goes under the sink to where it keeps water circulating until it reaches a certain temperature, that may be your best course. It may be less expensive. And that's just a comfort valve. The only problem with a system like that is Sometimes when you go to brush your teeth with cold water, the water's warm because it's used that cold side to circulate the warm water back through. So it's a possibility that could happen. But most people, that really doesn't bother them. So that's what I would look at. Let me see here. Hair is deep in the pipe. How could I clean it? What is the best way? <clears throat> you know, you may need to get a top sink snake, may need to do a lot of different things. Yeah, and, and I like this. Uh, if you can please share this out with people you think it could help. If you've got somebody that owns a house or have people in your community that own a house, people that maybe are in the trades, maybe have somebody that wants to get in the trades, guys, this is what we do these for, and it really does help a lot. When you share it, it lets LinkedIn know that you like it. If you go down in the comments and like it, give it a thumbs up, comment. Anything you do makes it better. So Tomas says, in the U.S., you only have sewer installations connections by glue or rubber sealing. Poland and Germany, glued installations don't exist. That's interesting. If you don't use glue, do you use a rubber seal like that? Uh, man, maybe we need to do a plumbing Germany video. We're always looking at, and, and that would be a good thing to do, Tomas. Go into our subreddit, Roger Wakefield Posts, and look at the pictures and videos and stuff like that. Maybe you can give us a video uh, or a picture of a German installation. I'd love to see it whether it's a video or a picture or whatever, show us how y'all join pop and, and let's see what we do different. Next, Lisa says, I'm replacing the flush valve in my American standard one piece model 90 or 2092 part number, yada, yada, yada. Can I get the rubber seal to grip? Can't get the rubber seal to grip using a three eighths inch socket wrench. Uh, you know what, Lisa, I would have to actually look up all that. Uh, what I would do is look up that valve number and see if you can find an installation video for that in particular, because I'm trying to think of which part that is, and, and I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of why the rubber wouldn't grab if it's the the flush valve or the is it the fill valve or flush valve? Uh, Flush valve in the middle that has the flapper attached to it. Fill valve to the side. And I'm thinking the 2092 is the fill valve. Uh, and I'm trying to think of why you would have a 3 8 inch nut or 3 8 inch socket wrench. Literally, what I do on my fill valves, I put the rubber on the inside, push it down through, and then tighten up the nut below while I'm holding it from the top. So I'm not sure about these. Let me look at this, see if I can do something real quick. Let me see. I'm trying to help you, Lisa. Let me see what I can come up with. Okay, I see the 2092. The toilet. 
I'm just trying to see. Yeah, it's it's just giving me that as a, a toilet number. Oh, there we go. Let me look this puppy up real quick and see what I can come up with. Trying to help a sister out. I see that's showing a, a cartridge, not for a toilet. Okay, so you are showing a, a fill valve or, or a flush valve. So here, here's what you do is you take the old one off, and I've got a pair of huge channel locks to tighten the nut off the bottom. That way I can take that off and replace that entire piece. I don't know what you're looking for a 3.8 socket for. I don't know where that would fit in. But with me, I mean, you're trying to take that big nut off the bottom, and that's going to make all the difference in the world. <clears throat> Xander says not a question about plumbing or anything like that, but do you like classic cars? Man, I, I love classic American muscle cars, Corvettes, Chevy Camaros, even Ford Mustangs. Like I'm, I'm a bow tie boy. I drive a Chevy truck, but even Ford Mustangs, I love classic cars. Yes, I do. And I used to have a 57 Chevy Apache pickup truck, thought the world of it. Charles, how do I become a plumber's apprentice? I think I answered this one a while ago. Uh, man, start going through my videos. You will find you, you've got two choices. Go to the union or go open shop and find a good plumbing, plumbing company to work for, and I think you'll be good. Craig says, hello again, Roger from England. I know your opinion. Okay, so I already did all that. So I've got Stephanie. Is it truly possible to utilize subcontractor plumbers to perform residential service with what the North Texas market price points are compared with what subs look to be paid for the work performed? Is it possible to utilize subcontractor plumbers? You know, and, and Stephanie, it is. Here, here's my problem with that is I, I don't like hiring subcontractors because you, you lose all control then. If I want things done a certain way, I can't tell a sub that doesn't meet my quality. I cannot use them again. But there's a lot of things that could go in legal that I still don't think is good quality. And my thought process is that the, at, the, at the end of the day, I want them doing it the way I want it done. And also, if you hire subs, you don't really get to tell them, hey, I'll need y'all to work this week. I need y'all to work this weekend. They're subcontractors. You don't get to tell them when to be at work, how to work, and what to do. There's just, there's a lot of things that I don't like about that, but definitely look, that, that's a conversation I would love to talk more about. If you want to reach out to me uh, and we can talk about it because I'm always looking at something different, a different way to do things, a different way to bring people in. And it's a great conversation topic. I promise you that. Uh Got a question here from Kareem says, what is the hardest thing about plumbing? And this is a really good question because I, I, don't, I don't know if you mean physically or mentally or what. You know, the hardest thing about it is, and, and it's not really hard, but, but it's just learning all the systems and processes, learning the right way to do things, learning not to take shortcuts and doing things right, no matter who's looking. And all that's a really big deal to me because I believe in always doing things right. And to me, Kareem, that, that's the biggest problem that we have. There's a lot of plumbers and apprentices and just any tradespeople that they want to take shortcuts. I think that when you learn something, work extra hard to learn how to be the very best at it that you can be. And I think that will forever set you apart in what you do. Steve Harloa says 119 watching, only 48 likes. What's up? What's up with that? Man, I agree. And, and the good thing is I don't get to see how many likes I have. Uh, I can actually only see three. So I, I have no idea what's going on. But guys, I will tell you this. If you do like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, man, go over here and comment and tell me why. I would love to hear why.
Yeah, and, and man, great comment based on the question I just asked. Little Normie says, I find subcontractors have less pride. And Cohen Blomart says, subs rush through the work and make more mistakes. They get in a hurry. To them, it's all just about getting in and making the money. And, and me, I want I want to hire plumbers that take pride in their work. They, they want to be here early. They want to learn the right way to do things. And that they come in fired up, ready to go. And that's the way I always was in my career. So I guess that's why I look for that when I hire people. And, and I think it does, it, it makes a big difference. And I like this. Justin says, what do you think about the new millennial or new Milwaukee sewer camera? I'm wanting to try that. I'm wanting to try the new rigid sea snake that, that has like the intelligent head. Man, there are so many, you know, and that's the neat thing about our industry. And that's why, and I made this video earlier talking to people saying, look, if you want to be in the top 5% of your industry, get up and study your trade, study your skill every day. So in plumbing, you can study new tools, new materials, new techniques, and new Milwaukee sewer machines is going to be new tools. You're going to know about everything coming out. And after about five years, if you get up every day and study for 30 minutes to an hour about new equipment, materials, and tools, you're going to know more than 95% of the people in your industry. That's how you get to be on the very top. So I think that is fantastic. Hadn't got to try it yet. So anyway, I'm wanting to try the new Milwaukee and the new Rigid, and I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Seuss. Grahals, hope I said that right. Grahals says, PEX or copper? Been having to replace copper with PEX. You know, here's the deal. I think they, they're both good. I like PEX, but I like it when people oversize it. And my whole reason behind that is that what happens when they don't oversize it, if you put in a, a three quarter inch PEX 90, if you look at the size of it, it creates a flow restriction. That's my biggest problem with PEX and what I've seen from people. So perfect. Stephanie says she will definitely be reaching out. King Davis Jr. says mobile home plumbing, more specifically, what would cause a kitchen sink to clog and nothing seems to work? If it's the drain clogged, it's just like any other house. You, you run a top sink snake through the sink, through the P-trap, stuff like that. Uh, you may have to end up running a sewer machine through it. That's big, and I love this. Yeah, never take shortcuts. Your name is on it. That is huge. Thank you, Rich. Hit the like button. There you go. Uh, it's hard to like on the TV, YouTube app. Make me pull out my cell. Well, Cliff, man, to give us a like, that's what we need, man. Mark Stern, my brother from another mother. Hardest part in plumbing is the heating period. Uh, there's so many systems and every plumber does it different. And, you know, here in Texas, and, and I'm assuming you're talking about like heating, like hydronic heating here in Texas, plumbers don't deal with that. Uh, and I say that they, they do make some radiant floor systems, but plumbers really, man, don't mess with it at all. I know they want us to, they, they've been reaching out to me saying, Hey, will you do this? Will you do this? Not very interested in it. And not that I'm not interested. I just don't see there being much of a supply and demand for it. So I don't see it being worth doing what we'd have to do to get everything in place to do it. I'll tell you what, though, I am looking at the cure in place plastic piping. Okay, so Lisa says I'm replacing the flush valve. I have the rec correct part. It's a one-piece toilet. That's what the socket wrench is used for from the inside. Man, that, Lisa, I'm going to have to look that one up. I've never seen a flush valve that that had a part like that to change out. But, hey, that's the thing about plumbing, guys. Look, we don't know everything, but, man, we keep on trying. Austin says, did you go to college or did you just start working for a plumber? And, Austin, this is a great question. Because in my free mini course, <clears throat> and there is a, a link down in the description, but in my free mini course, I talk about 
Where'd my deal go? There we go. Uh, yeah, y'all check that out because that's, that's that's what we need to do. Go to the subreddit. Uh, in my mini course, I talk about joining the trades different ways. You can either join the union, the United Association. I would contact PHCC and ask them what companies they have in your area that are members because a lot of the PHCC companies also send their plumbers through a training program. And I think that's phenomenal. I did not go to college. I did not have a college education. Uh, I have taken college courses since I got out and became a plumber. The only reason being is I wanted to learn construction management. I wanted to learn some different things. So that was a real big deal to me. And once I started doing that, man, I actually felt better about myself. Kind of neat. All right, let me scroll down here a little bit. <clears throat> Sean says he's not interested in working, so he thinks he'll stay in Nebraska. Sean, brother, come down here. I will put you to work. Can you start a trade in your late 40s? Mike Mills, absolutely. Uh, I was talking earlier about the uh, – uh, I'm already looking at the next question. Uh, I was talking earlier about an apprentice I had that was 55 whenever I was an instructor in the union. And he did great. And, you know, it, it's just like Austin asked a while ago. You know, a lot of plumbers go through the union and get their apprentice training program there. Some go through PHCC. Some do what I did. I went to work for a plumber. Uh, I went to work for a plumbing company. Luckily for me, I worked for some great plumbers. And that helped me out a lot because I learned the right way to do things. And that was huge. Mason says, I see the Texas Nebraska cotton bowl football back there. Unfortunate to see the Huskers beat the Longhorns. Uh, how did you get the football? Uh, Mason, I've got a real good friend whose grandfather was a big UT alumni and this football And this football is cool because it is actually signed by Daryl Royal. It is signed by, and Daryl Royal signatures right here. It is signed by Rosie Greer. Uh, and th there's a lot of other big players on here. But yeah, the 1974 Cotton Bowl, Rawlings commemorative ball. And man, I am a diehard Longhorn fan. So. Is pretty neat when he gave me that, especially since it's signed by Daryl Royal. <clears throat> uh, Darth Tiberius says, have you any idea what would cause the toilet to stop flushing correctly? I need to flush it multiple times quickly or it won't flush. Either your, your flapper, your adjustment on your handle is off, something's off, or your holes are clogged up, it's not getting enough water through there. It could be a few different things, but those are the ones that I would start with. Guys, if y'all have any questions, please jump up over into the forum. There's a link, I believe, up top, and I have put it in a couple of times here. I'm gonna see if I've still got it. Looks like I might, nope, took it out. Uh, so anyway, uh, I had a link in there. I know it's in here somewhere. If you're on YouTube, it's up, pinned up to the top. You know, jump in there. And actually, you can probably scroll up. The the bot puts it in every now and then. Uh, if you've got questions, oh, please jump over into the forum. Ask them there. That's where I'm scrolling through answering. And just having a good old time today. Number one, how's everybody doing? And I want to ask this for a reason because, man, Things have been crazy the last few weeks here in the United States. We've had freezes. We've had freeze bus. Plumbers are slammed. I mean, like, hard time slammed. So the, the, the cool thing is, what are you doing? How are you doing? And where are you doing it? Uh, I, I know where, you know, Sean and Mark and people like that are from, but do me a favor. Put in the comments where you're from and what you do. Are you a plumber? Are you a brain surgeon? You just want to learn about plumbing? Uh, do me a favor, though. Go in the comment. Tell me who you are, where you're from, what you do. And I know who you are by your name. 
And if you've got questions, please jump over to the forum. That's where I'm at now. Josh Baxter says, I've been plumbing for eight years. Always wonder what would happen if you popped a water heater backwards. Here's what happens is you don't get out near as much hot water. <clears throat> Think about it. When the water comes in the cold side, it goes down the dip tube to the very bottom. So the hottest water is at the top. If you pop it backwards, your cold water is going to come in at the top. That's going to chill the warm water quite a bit. And your water heater is only going to draw the, the water from the bottom of the tank. And eventually that's going to be the cold water because the cold water is going to settle. So it really does, it messes things up. If you've ever gone and done a repair on a house that the cold water inlet tube is trashed or broken or the, the plumber tried soldering it in when he soldered the adapter after he screwed it in and melted the tube and it dropped, same type problem. It's not a good thing to do. All right, if I can find where my arrow is on my mouse. James says, good afternoon. My wife and I just bought a house up in Lake Arrowhead, California in the mountains. We were planning on installing radiant heat. There you go, Mark. Uh, in the driveway to prevent it from freezing in the winter. What's your thought on that? And that's a really good question. And if you're up in Washington, right? Uh, California. I've got a friend up in Washington. It is all reds, plumbing, and radiant heat. I would call them. Uh, he's the one that I know that probably does more radiant heat than most people. I've never seen one installed under a driveway, but I see where it could be done. Uh, I think it's a great idea. So, man, call Todd, Al call Todd Allred at Allred's Plumbing and Radiant Heat. He's just outside of Seattle. And, man, ask him what's going on. He's a good guy. Next question in the forum, Kevin Caps. How has this channel impacted your business? I'm looking for ways to grow my business. Uh, and and Kevin's in roofing. Kevin, here's what I want to tell you. And, and look, I don't know if you're familiar with Roofing Insights. If you have gone to any of the the Roofing Insights conferences or anything, I spoke at Roofing Insights conference. Uh, this last year, it was in December and there were probably 600 roofers there. And when I started talking to them about YouTube and how to use it to grow their channel, it, it blew their mind. I mean, here, here's what it does for my channel. Number one, I've quit paying for Google pay-per-click, but I have started doing it recently because I want the Google guaranteed. But the, the, the cool thing about it is literally our phones are blowing up because of what we do on social media, not just YouTube, but, but YouTube has helped so much. You got to think about it. People search. Number one, YouTube is the second largest search engine there is. It's owned by the largest Google. So when people go into Google and search plumbing, I mean, when you get out of here, do that, go to just open up a, an incognito window, go to YouTube, search plumbing and you'll find me. And that does help people find me. And it has helped my business grow a lot. Next question in the forum. Dave Chapman. Roger, just to keep the theme of good work, the best way I was taught how to do something is if you want to do the work in your own house, why would you even think about doing it to someone else's house? Have pride in your work, no matter what your trade is. And Dave, I love that. I put it to my guys a little bit different. I literally, we, we teach our team. If you wouldn't do it at your mother's house or your grandmother's, or we have them think of it the other way. If this was your mother's house or your grandmother's, what would you do here? And to me, that, that, that is one of the biggest and best things that we can do because, man, I, I know that I would not ever do my mother or grandmother wrong. And that's why, that, that's why we look at it the way that we do. And, and I think that's just a big deal. Steve says, copper, 
Pex is not good in Hawaii. Too many rats. Too many rats. I love that. Even if you don't have rats, they find your pipes for the water. Other than that, I like Pex. Uh, and, and you know what? I've had rats eat the PVC drain line off a tub over here, getting into the P-trap where the water is. So, Steve, I've seen all that. It's crazy. Hipsters and Hippies says, and I love that name. Could you, would you use pecs on trailers up north? Uh, yeah, I would use them anywhere. Number one, as long as you can get it in a position where it can be ke kept from freezing, or if you can put things in where it all has fall and put a drain on the bottom. So if you disconnect from water, you can open a valve and drain everything down where nothing will freeze. I think that is wonderful. Mark says, watching on LinkedIn. What's up, buddy? Uh, man, I, I love it when people, and, and Mark's on LinkedIn, and, and I can I can scroll through here and see I've got people from Facebook, people from LinkedIn, uh, people from YouTube. Look, we use StreamYard, which is fantastic. It lets me broadcast to other places. Uh, it lets me broadcast to multiple places all at the same time. I do. I love that. And now if I can find my comments here. There we go. Yeah, I'll start with the replacement of your flapper. Isn't it funny how it always starts with the flapper? The, the most inexpensive part there is. But learn how to do it, and that'll normally fix the problem. Muhammad says, what advice would you give a first-year apprentice? Man, it is really good because I... Uh, <laughs> I was actually shooting videos in here earlier. The five best plumbing tips and tricks to make more money. Have the right tools with you. Study your trade. Always keep learning. Have a special product that you can sell to consumers that will save them money. And always try to be the very best. If you can always keep learning and always try to be the very best, that will make you the best apprentice. And if you start thinking now about where you want to be in your future, meaning one day do you want on your own company? Do you want to be a superintendent? Do you want to be a foreman? What do you want to do? Should you start studying uh, construction management? Should you start studying leadership? What should you do? It can make all the difference in the world. And, and I got confused right here because I looked down and saw this. Rocky says, oh, wait, wrong one. I'll, I'll get to it here in a second. Rocky says, should I replace my 35-year-old in-line in line water shutoffs or wait till there's an issue with him? I see no leaks or corrosion. Rocky, it depends on if you think that you'll need them to shut the water off. If when we go out and do a sewer water test on the house, we've pretty much got to have them to isolate the house from the yard. So mm -hmm. it really can be a big deal. But if you're not planning on using them anytime soon, and you don't see any emergencies coming up, you're probably okay. Here we go. Josh says, Roger, she's talking about the tank bolts. Okay, now it makes sense. In order to do the tank bolts, what you've got to do, and I think it was Lisa, you've got to stick a screwdriver in from the top because the, the top of the screws are in the tank, and then get your 3 8 nut on your tank bolts. Now it makes perfect sense. I love that. One of my neighbors, Sodom Adad, uh, hello from the gutters. Uh, that's where I live. So my brother or sister from another mister. Hello from Canada, Scott B. Good to have you in here. DC Exploration says, hello, guys. Be More Chills says, what is it doing? Does it just spin and not go down? Yeah, there's a lot of different things that that tool it could be doing. Steve says, why don't you ream your copper? Uh, I do most of the time. There may be times for certain things that I don't, but man, we're, we're, we're all supposed to. It depends on what we're doing. I like to ream it and bubble the outside. I've got different tools for that, and it helps me. DC Exploration says, hello from Wales in the UK. How are you? And Julie's right. It's never too late to start a career in the trades. All right, back up to the forum. Rocky says, should I replace my 30 uh, Already been there. 
Rocky, if you're retired and just looking for something to do, you may want to do it anyway. Evan says, I'm 21 thinking about leading a trade. Why should I become a plumber? I'm from New Hampshire and I work overnights in a factory. Well, Evan, I can't tell you why you should be a plumber, but I will tell you there's a link in the description to my free mini course that would help you answer what kind of plumber you may want to be. But here's the cool thing about it. You don't just have to be a plumber. It could be plumber, electrician, HVAC, roofer. That just kind of answers questions to help you figure out, do you want to be residential or commercial? Do you want to be service or, re or new construction? Do you, and I said, yeah, so new construction or service, residential or commercial, and union or non-union. And I'll ask you questions to help you figure out what you think might be best for you. I can't tell you why you should be a plumber. I will tell you there's a shortage. Supply and demand over the next few years is going to be crazy. I truthfully think that plumbers are going to be making about $100 an hour on the check here in the next few years. I just, I do. I see it coming because of supply and demand. Muhammad says, hello from Detroit. Austin says, thank you for answering my question. Going to college for plumbing and glad. I mean, I'm glad for you. Uh, which is better for a greenhouse in the winter, PEX or PVC? If it's in the winter time and it's a greenhouse and it's not heated, I would say PEX. If it is heated, you could go either way. It says your spoiler video, you failed. Steven, not sure which spoiler video you're talking about, but I fail at a lot of things in my life, so it's no big deal. Grind hard every day. I love it. Muhammad, we talked about the first year apprentice. Steven says solder. I'm assuming that means learn to solder. Uh, and everybody should know how to do that. Ralph says, good afternoon, Roger. When I flush my toilet, it doesn't swirl, fills up with water. Gradually goes down. What's the problem? What can I do about it? I would check your vent. I would also check the drain line itself to see if it's clogged. Uh, I hate text to talk. There you go. Sean says, uh, yeah, my wife is the Husker fan of my house. Boomer says, see, I shouldn't have put that up there. Make that go away quick. That almost hurts my eyes. Sir Unknown, how are you doing? There is a link to the forum. If you have a question, please jump over there. I'm just kind of scrolling through the chat, seeing who's in here. Steven says he's never seen me ring pipe. It's funny because my videographers, guys are like, dude, you ring pipe forever. So it's funny. Uh, BSC Recovery and Rescue, hello to you. Doing fantastic. Sol Giovanni, Sol John, man, I'm going to mess that up. Sol Giovanni, I hope I got that right. 21 thinking about learning a trade. Why should you become a plumber? Man, I answered that a while ago. It's kind of hard for me to tell you why to become a plumber, but I will tell you plumbers in the future are going to be making even better money than we are now, and plumbers really do make pretty good money. Mark Norris says, <clears throat> My gas meter is leaking at the fitting immediately on top of the meter. Is it my responsibility or the city of San Antonio? It depends on if it's. No, it really doesn't. Yeah, I guess it does. If it's on the inlet side, it's theirs. If it's on the outlet side, it's yours. But normally after the valve, they call that yours. I would try to tighten it up very gently. Uh, spray it with soapy water. See if you get bubbles. Don't smoke while you do it. Don't use a flame anywhere near it. Here's what's going to happen though, Mark. If it is leaking, probably call a plumber before you call the, your gas provider. Your gas provider is just going to come turn it off. And then they're going to tell you to call a plumber. Lady Charlotte, how are you doing today? How do you know the shower valve is bad? I'm getting water to the valve, but not to the shower head. If you've got water to the valve, it could be the shower head itself. Have you taken it off to see if you get water through it? Because if you got water to the valve, to the cartridge, you should have it all the way through. Back over into the forum. 
already answered that one. Rubber Ducky says, what can you do if you have any leaks or something like that? Uh, man, you can fix them. You know, we, we've got videos where we teach people how to fix all kinds of leaks. One of the neat things is sometimes people don't know that they have leaks. We, I've actually got a guy coming in town tomorrow for some video. Don't know if y'all saw the video I did last week, but it is the meter dog, how to install it. And I've got to tell you, it is so cool because there's an app for your phone where you can look at it and see how much water you're using. You can see when you're using water. But the neat thing is it'll notify you when you have a leak. And if you've installed the valve, you can press a button and shut the water off to your house. I think that is phenomenal. And I'm telling y'all, those of y'all that are plumbers, this is something you want to contact me about because this thing, this meter dog, this is going to be the future. This is going to be what we install on every meter because it gives the homeowner the ability to see how much water they're using. That way, when the city comes in and says, hey, uh, you've used 20 times as much water as normal, you can look at your app and say, no, I hadn't. I monitor it too. And it gives you something to argue with. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, Steve says he always reams his. Yeah, my guys laugh at me. They're like, Roger, you, you ream your pop all the time. So I don't know which video I did that, that I didn't, but my editing crew may have cut that out for a reason. Yeah, Josh Baxter, you're right. Plumbing is never going anywhere. BCC, hello. How are you doing? Uh, here's a good one. Uh, Jake Parrish says, do you suggest any books other than the IPC? I like the UPC code book. Actually, I like the UPC study guide. The reason being the way it's laid out, you can go to the back, look at the answers, go up front and just highlight the correct answer. That way you're literally just reading this book, question and answer, question and answer, question and answer. And I'm telling you, when I go through and do that, Man, I'm unstoppable. King Davis says, in mobile home plumbing, what would cause the kitchen sink to back up? It won't drain with anything I've tried. Uh, your, your, your line's clogged, your vent's clogged, something is wrong. Jake, I just answered that one. Ricardo, how come when I just flush my toilet with nothing in it, the toilet stops up? Uh, it's either stopped up down in the Santee, down in the trap, somewhere down in there. So you've got a problem. You need to get in and figure out what, what the big problem is. You guys, I've got my sub right there. Go over and check it out. Uh, if you're a plumber or in the trades, or you just really like the trades and you see it a lot, people go over there and post their best and worst pictures and videos. And I'll tell you what, it has been great for our YouTube channel because Number one, the people in there, the comments that it gets and things like that. But also, it's fantastic. Austin, folks, is going to be graduating from plumbing in May. Fantastic. Federal Bureau of Investigation, if you got a question, jump over into the forum and ask it. Kevin Caps is in St. Louis. Yeah, gas meter is leaking at the fitting directly on top. I got that one. You can, you do all sorts of stuff. Uh, Facebook is in the house. Man, we got Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn here. I love it. Work in Utah, plumbed in California. Got masters in Utah. Southern or St. Louis general contractor, master plumber from New Jersey. Welcome to the house. Guitar 1301. Hipsters and hippers, Jesse, mechanic from Pennsylvania. Yeah, Josh Baxter says, call the gas company. If you can't just snug up the nut and make it stop, call the gas company. Uh, FBI says, so flush it. Thing is that open when you pull the handle, never goes down. You have to manually shut it. You need to get in there and adjust it. Make some adjustments on either the flapper or the handle, the chain. Uh, that'll really make a big difference. Rich says an RMP for 39 years from Pennsylvania. I guess we got some thumbs up because Julie says thank you for them. I sure do appreciate that. British Columbia security guard. Man, we got all kinds of people in the house. I love it. Be more chill says Mark Norris, a rubber washer is in the top nut. Facebook. Oh, uh, 
FBI replaced the flapper. That's probably the biggest deal. Here we go. High Times says Bakers, California, or Bakersfield, former journeyman service plumber, now communications technician. Somebody smart enough to get out of plumbing. I'm joking. I, I love what I do. Y'all know that. Is it open? It goes down. Yeah, you got to fix that. Been in the business over 26 years. Commercial, residential, and service. Got Bob from Pittsburgh, residential, new construction. I love that. BSC Recovery and Rescue from the UK. Just watching, I'm assuming, for the wonderful mustache. Nick says, I work for a GC in Miami. Love the work. Been doing it since I was 18. My thoughts on distilled water. Uh, Stephen, we don't do a lot with distilled water here. Uh, I have ran ultra high pure water systems for Texas Instruments, for medical facilities, for dialysis and things like that. Don't know that I've ever ran any distilled water though. Steve says 26 years himself. Mark Norris, Baltimore chills. It's right now a meter city on my responsibility. And, and man, it, if it's on the meter, it, it it may depend on which side. For some reason, I'm thinking before the meter is theirs, after the meter is yours, meaning it goes in one side and comes out the other. Not sure. Lady Charlotte says, I work in Texas at Sugars of San Antonio. Thanks for all the answers. Lady Charlotte, you are more than welcome. Uh, actually, my, my wife and I actually just bought a business down in Central Texas, Austin, San Antonio, and all that. Yeah, my Thing just jumped and I just lost everything. Let's scroll through here and see where it went. Oh, I did lose it. I gotta be getting close. There we go. Uh, so anyway, lots of opportunity there, but uh, we bought a business to help people network to grow their businesses. It's called Master Networks. Uh, you can go check it out. Master Networks Central Texas or Master Networks Houston. We own that region too. And man, we're just constantly helping people grow their business through networking. It is wonderful. Next question in the forum. Nathan Brown. My utility room sink keeps losing pressure and ultimately won't push any water out of the faucet. If I have the hot water knob on, it doesn't have this problem with the cold water. Any idea as to what it is? You know, there, there could be something in that line clogging it up. What I would do is probably try to blow air back through the hot water system. Has it always been like this or is it just something it started doing? It may also just be a cartridge in that handle. Uh, there, there could be something there in that faucet. So that is definitely a possibility. There you go. It says he had radiant heat in his floors of his car wash in Iowa. It worked great. Charles, good for you, man. Oh, there you go. James Clifton says, uh, funny thing is my sister lives in Seattle. Good friends with Todd. Uh, James, look, man, I love Todd all red to death. He is a great guy, wonderful plumber. Uh, him and him and Chris are just wonderful people. We were actually thinking we were going to see them here in April. We're involved in a nationwide organization that helps us as plumbers. So it, it's funny uh, that y'all are friends. Good, Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. There you go. Steve says, uh, nice. I've made a lot of other people rich. It's my turn. Just took the leap. Good for you. James says, didn't think of that. Hey, I don't think of everything either. Trust me. Uh, we've been fixing them too. Everybody fixes gas leaks. Yeah. Steve's at four years ago, best leap you ever made. I did it about five years ago. Kevin Caps, you are welcome. <laughs> and Sean Strong says, I do stuff at my house that I won't do at grandma's. Come on, Sean. Take care of your house, too, just like you would grandma's. 
Joe Mathias says, you have all kinds of endorsements, special licenses. Do you have a CCCDI? Not that I'm aware of. I love his quality for the most part. It's been very awesome to see someone have value like me. Uh, man, if you're talking about me, I, I love doing what I do, and that's why I do all of it. <clears throat> Bob and Cindy Delmanto says, okay, all of your shirts look starched and pressed. Is that how you dress when getting your hands dirty? And how is it that there's never a stain on them? You know, believe it or not, whenever I go out into the field, <clears throat> I do wear this. Uh, it's just me. It's And I've got all kinds of different colors, and there's no stains on them because once I get a stain on them, I get rid of them. Uh, and I say that, and one of my blue ones actually has a spot right down here. I just can't get rid of it because I love it. So anyway, Bob and Cindy, uh, and I, it's me. It's just, I'm always people, my jeans are starched. I, I wear work boots. It's funny. I was on a big YouTubers podcast a while back and he was talking and said, let me tell you about Roger. He says when Roger shows up to speak about social media, this is what I wear. I, I wear my start shirt. I wear my work boots. And that's what he said. He said, Roger shows up in work boots. He said, let me tell you, Roger don't get dressed up. Roger doesn't wear a suit. Roger is a real plumber. And man, I am. I love it. Uh, Mark Norris says, when does the city have the responsibility to fix the gas leaks? Here in Texas, they don't. Because the cities don't own it. It's a third party. It's their responsibility to fix it. If it is on the main prior to the meter, if it's in the piping, I believe prior to the meter, once it goes through the meter and comes out, then it's on the homeowner. Steven says, what I love most about this channel is the fact he's doing his best to be genuine. I, I, I want to tell you, and, and thank you for that, because I take that as a compliment. Steve, one thing I'll tell you, I spoke at an event in Los Angeles, and Julie was there. So it, it was it was really neat. But the cool thing about it is after I spoke, that there was a line of people to, to ask questions. And this guy came up and he says, Roger, I don't know if you remember me. I said, I do. I said, we actually talked two days ago in the hall here. And he said, yes, sir. He said, I, I just want to tell you. He says, look, I've watched your videos on YouTube. I've spoken with you in the hall. And now I've sat and watched you do a presentation on social media. He said, you're the same person everywhere. And, and I just started laughing. I said, I said oh, my God, can, can you imagine me just trying to be somebody else? My thing is, look, I love plumbing. I, I, I don't have to make this stuff up. I, I know what I'm talking about. I've done it all long enough. I've done residential. I've done commercial. I've done service. I've done new construction. I've been non-union. I've been union. I'm non-union again. So I've done all of it. So when I give people advice, it's based on true life experience. So, so Stephen, I take that as a compliment because I do think I am very genuine about it. But it's, it's also the fact that, man, I love what I do, so I have a passion for it. Dave Chapman from the Boston area, retired Army. Thank you so much. We were actually down in Fort Hood yesterday, two days ago. God, maybe longer than that. Abigail says, uh, Roger, love you so much. Want to kiss your bald head? Uh, and I got a little bit of hair up there. I just cut it really, really, really short, Miss Abigail. But thank you. Good to have you in here. There you go. Rich says, when the leak is before the meter, after the meter is yours. So we're on the same page, brother. Still wonder why he doesn't read Miss Copper. And I got to see what video you're talking about. Uh, Mark Norris says, makes sense. Editor Grayson is in there working on videos. That's why he's not in here today. Uh, just do whatever my wife needs done around the house. Brother, good for you. Catherine B., how are you? Good to have you in the house. Rocky Vital, you are welcome. Yeah, and Sean, well, amen. Dave Chabin, thank you for all you do for our country. Stephen says, I try to teach all my apprentices to be well-rounded and underground rough and finish as well as service. Kicks my tail 
because they can punch their ticket as soon as they are out of school. You know, and, but here's the thing, Stephen, and, and I love the fact that you said, look, I, I want my people to be well-rounded. I teach my guys how to run a plumbing company. I, I try to teach them why we want the truck stock the way we want it, why it's important to order materials the way we want it, why we keep things stocked on the truck like we do. I want them to understand the value of doing it and doing it right and how that affects running a business. So, man, congratulations to you. And you're right. If, if they decide to leave, they're gone. There's really not a lot you can do about it. The problem is maybe you don't train them, though, and they stay with you forever. That's not going to be good. So, Stephen, I love the fact that you do that. All right. I want to scroll down here real quick. Maybe. And go ahead and bring that up. Marcos Vega, how are you? Watch your videos with my daughter, Brooke, and she loves them. Keep up the great work. Marco, number one, th th thank you so much. Uh, I love seeing stuff like this. Uh, th and, and it's so funny because I had somebody send me a video one time too. He said, my son watches you every day. And this son's four or five years old. He says, and then after he finishes eating dinner, he wants to go watch Roger. So I guess I'm this larger than life cartoon now or something. But Marcos, the, the neat thing about it is he sent me a video one of his daughter or his son laying in bed and, and you know, got an iPad or a phone laid up over his head like this. And he's laying down and, you know, got his head down on the pillow. And he videoed his son. And you can hear my voice saying, hi. I'm Roger Wakefield, lead AP, the expert plumber. And in this video, and I mean, man, I just started laughing, but I got to tell you, it brought tears to my eyes because I, I love the fact that, that there are kids out there watching me and saying, hey, uh, I'm learning from this guy. So I think it is really pretty cool. Steven says, teach the homeowner rightly. This is the best plumber chat I've ever seen as far as a nationwide platform. Please don't stop. Steven, I, I love this. Uh, you know, you got Sean Strong making a comment right below you. Sean is up in Nebraska. I keep trying to get him to come to Texas. Uh, Stephen Harlow is trying to get him to go to Hawaii. Uh, you know, the, the cool thing is I've got some great people in here, and I love it. Uh, great comment here. Rich, I got to run, guys. Thank you, Roger. Always be kinder than necessary. Everyone stay safe. Amen. Man, stay safe and be good. I appreciate it. Josh Brown says, watching your videos has given me confidence to work on some small plumbing projects. Congratulations to you. George Phillips says, how hard do you have to work become an apprentice plumber? You know, if you're worried about how hard you got to work, it's probably in the right trade for you. Because there are going to be times that you got to work hard. Uh Oh, I didn't even click on it. Here we go. Uh, George so it says, how hard did you have to work for becoming an apprentice plumber? So I don't know if you mean getting into it or to become it, but luckily for me, I worked with some great plumbers and they made me want to work hard. I wanted to perform well. I wanted to learn well. I wanted to be one of the best plumbers they had ever met. And after 35 years in the trade, I realized those are two of the best plumbers I've ever known. So it, it really... It, it did a lot for me to work with them, and I think it's great. But the cool thing about it is that's how I try to teach everybody, is to be the very best that they can be and always work the hardest. Now, if you mean how hard is it, how hard was it to work to get in to be a plumber's apprentice, luckily for me, it wasn't that hard. And I've got a lot of videos where I teach people how to get into the trades. Troop 210 says the plumber called me first. He said, I want to rightly talked about that. Roger, sorry, this back and forth. You're my idol virtual hug. Abigail, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Ready temp. Uh, which are becoming more popular, on demand or timer based water heater circulation? Uh, really, it's a little bit of both. It depends on where you're at or what the customer has been taught. So it can go either way. Uh, on demand, we don't see a lot of, but I do see some of the, the timer-based circulations and the comfort valve circulation, so both of them. 
Okay, and this is a great question. Noah Herman says, good day. Uh, my TMP valve is leaking. Should I replace it or the whole water heater? And we've got a, a list of questions that we asked. You know, how long are you going to be at the house? Uh, how old is the water heater? What's it going to cost you to replace it? And what would it be if you put that money towards a new water heater? If the water heater is normally over six or seven years old, I'll tell you, like, it's just time to replace it. If you've maintained it every year, you might say, well, look, I normally get eight to 12 out of mine. Then it might be smart to go ahead and do it. So different choices for you, but great way to look at it. You get one shot seven. I like that. Are you commercial or residential? Texas Green Plumbing is a residential service company. But guys, I've done commercial, residential, new construction, service. I, I've done it all. So we get calls every now and then. And I'm med gas. So, and I was talking to another plumber in Dallas last night. He's wanting to get med gas because really, he says, Roger, you're the only plumber that I know that does service and med gas. So anytime a dental comp dental office calls any plumbing company I know and say, hey, can y'all fix med gas? They've got to refer them to me which is good until it keeps running. It's the just it's clogged most time. It sure can be. Muhammad says, thank you for answering my question because I enjoy plumbing the process and everything. M Muhammad, I, I, I'm like you, man. I love what I do. I love talking about it. I love working on it. I love designing it. I love figuring out what the problems are, all kinds of things. So Troop 210 says TMP repair around 300, new water heater about 2,000. I would say, how old is it? If it's over six or eight, 10 years old, it, it's time. So it might be smarter to just put that 300 towards that. I mean, think about it. That's what 15% of the $2,000 water heater. Did that in my head too. Y'all see that? Architectural Sheet Matter says, how are you, brother? What are your thoughts on guys using the excuse doing it right takes too long? Doing it wrong takes longer. And I have the I have no problem with that comment, but but I will tell them, you know, I have guys tell me sometimes, look, I didn't take time to test it because man, we were in a hurry. Okay, well, now we're having to send you back. How much time did you save compared to how much time is it going to cost us? So there's different ways to look at it, but architectural sheet metal one on one, I gotta tell you. There's only time to do it right. If my guys ever use that excuse with me, I normally start looking for a way to coach them out because they don't get what we're trying to do. My wife, two cents on youth. My two cents, our youth don't get dirty and he's right. Plumbers are a beautiful pastime. You know, and Stephen, here's the deal. Look, plumbers are going to be making great money here in the near future. Supply and demand is going to say, look, we can ask for whatever we want to ask for and, and do whatever we want to do. Mohammed said commercial is more fun, but residential gives you more side jobs. And I got to tell you, until I decided to open my own company, I wanted nothing to do with side work. I didn't want to get in trouble with the state. I didn't want to get in trouble and lose my license or get sued and not have insurance. So, no. Wasn't interested in it. Javier McKnight says, nice stream. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Josh Baxter says, great idea. And there's a lot of great ideas in here. That's what I love about this chap and, and the group that we have. It literally, man, I've got good people in here. I know that when Sean or Mark or, or, or Neil or somebody answer a question, man, they're going to give them great information. There's good people in here. It's a great community. That's part of why I really do enjoy doing what I do. Cheyenne V says, never hear you talk about restoration. That's what I do. Look, I, I love restoration. I love remodels. We don't do a lot of it. We are literally set up for plumbing repair, but restoration is great. I mean, especially here lately. Uh, and, and, and Cheyenne, I don't know where you're located, but literally here in the Dallas area or here in the North Texas area here lately, we were calling water mitigation companies and they're like, look, we can't get to people's houses. Every dehumidifier we've got, every fan we've got, everything they had was out. It was in use. There was not enough water mitigation companies or plumbing companies to get everything done. 
It's been crazy. Uh, plenty of that in New York. Lady Charlotte, clean, here we go. Clean the screen on the shower head, and do you have a galvanized riser? And if you got a galvanized riser, that whole thing, you're going to have to cut up on the wall behind it to change that out. Oh, here we go. This happens a lot. Catherine says, I love this. Our toilet got clogged by Barbie's heads, and my older boys pulled about 12 off. Oh, Barbie heads. My older boys pulled about 12 of them off, flushed them, caused a little sister, uh, got in their room, and my plumbing bill for a Sunday hurt bad. Man, Catherine, you're right. <laughs> I bet it did hurt, especially on a Sunday. Uh, well, th did the boys figure out that probably wasn't a good thing to do? Or did they think it was funny when they flushed it and the water came up? Mm. Troop 210 says, we just left, left a house in Lake McKinney, and they had 20-plus leaks on all the copper lines. Tell you what, somebody sent me a, a post from California the other day. Not what it was Austin. They had a house that had a deck or, or part of the house that was out over the side of a cliff. And there were piers there, posts or columns or something like that. And they had leaks in the floor. And they, the plumbers were coming out there looking up at it. And they're like, yeah, we can't fix it. And he was asking me, Roger, what do you think about it? Man. Uh, I told him, look, get a scaffolding company out there. And Sean, if you're still in here, that was over on Reddit. Uh, I don't know if you you saw that or anything, but it was kind of crazy. Here we go. Cheyenne says, as someone who does the cleanup afterwards, I love watching your videos. Look, we have fun making them. I've actually been in the studio most of the day today. I think we shot four videos today. Uh, Sean says, I want to put, put a meter dog on my house. Cool thing is, Dr. Richard Diverse, the inventor of Meter Dog, is actually, matter of fact, he'll be in town in about two hours. Uh, he's coming over here to the studio tomorrow, and we've got a meeting with a water conservation manager up here. We've got a meeting with some of the bigger plumbing companies to show them the Meter Dog and what the capabilities are. And I got to tell you, I think that is the neatest product out right now. That's kind of crazy. Ready temp and getting a perfect picture. A perfect picture is what it's all about. I like this. Abigail says you are unstoppable. Look, here's the thing. I, I've been doing this, what, almost three years now. And I love what I do. I'm having fun making videos. I'm having fun teaching people a trade, a skill, that they can use to improve their lives. So Abigail, thank you so much. I really do enjoy what I do. There you go. Hey, Steve, if, if you want the hookup on that, let me know. I, I can introduce you and Sean both. And Sean, you may want to take it into your company and say, hey, do y'all know about this? Uh, this is something I, I'm telling you, the reason I started making these videos, every, to me, Every plumber in the United States should be selling these because it ties onto the water meter. There's an option to install a valve. But the cool thing is when you install these, when a customer has a leak, you get a notification too. And you can literally just look down at that notification and look at meter dog. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. But look at meter dog and it, it gives you a daily number. So you know what your water usage is every day. And of course, I'm I'm hearing it. we have internet problems all the time. Uh, see if that'll open. But the the cool thing about it is, I think this is going to be one of the. This is a new to market item. It's it's similar to Flow. It's similar to Fin, but Meter Dog has a cellular connection. It is waterproof. So here in Texas, our meters are out by the curb. I can install it in the meter box, and I don't have to worry about it. And I got to tell you. I think it's phenomenal. Stream is perfect in the UK. I love that. Do they require CE hours every two years in your state? Here in Texas, they require it every year. All right, so I just want to show you. This is the report that I get on my meter dog. And I can pull this up every day, but my, my number being a seven is really good. I'm going to open up just another one that I have on here. 
This is actually the Kona Hill Airbnb. Uh, and I'm trying to get it where y'all can see that. So since I deal with Richard and work with him on that, I have a link to one of his. And Sean, and, and actually all the plumbers in here, they're actually working on a new device where you can go to a new build house. You can fill up your roof. You can put a, a test on it to where it detects the water level. Put a gauge on your copper so it knows the pressure a gauge on your gas so it knows the pressure and this system will let you know when there's a leak on it. And to me, that is really, really cool. All right. Back over in the forum for a little bit. Brian says, if your grandma was rich, would you use copper or PEX in her new house? You know, that's a really good question. Uh, Believe it or not, I would probably use Upanor. I think that the plastic piping it is going to be good. I, I don't see any problems coming along with it. I don't like PEX because the reduced flow because of the reduced fittings. I like PEX if you're going to oversize the system. But, you know, the way PEX, the way Upanor was originally put to me, the guy who told me about it says, look, you expand out this fitting and for the or this pipe and collar, and for the rest of the life of the pipe, it's trying to reduce to its original size. And that means, man, you're really never gonna have a leak. So I like that. Your clock is an hour. Fa -fa -fa -fa. Uh I don't know if you mean off, but I don't think so. It, it's normally set up automatic. And, and I hadn't looked at it, but, and, and it may be, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, I like this. Joe Mathias or Joe Mathis. Not everybody likes plumbers, but sooner or later, everybody needs one. Yeah, it, it happens. And I will go back and check that. 80 PSI, the highest. Okay. And so, somebody keeps telling me, okay, but my clock's an hour off. I'm going to check that. It says 4.29 p.m. That's what time it is here. Uh, we are Central Standard Time. So we're just in different time zones. I'm an electrician and your vids. Okay, I love this. I'm an electrician and I watch your vids to help all the time with certain issues I can fix. And, and Jacob, whenever I talk to people about becoming a better tradesman, you can... And you can use that same information. Keep learning about tools, material, equipment. What is new to the trade? What's going to help it get better? And man, I just, I think that is fantastic. So Jacob, thank you very much. I really do appreciate you putting that in there. Back over in the forum, Tegan says, are you commercial or residential? I happen to own a residential service plumbing company in the Richardson area, which is just Northeast of Dallas. And Dallas is actually in our service area. So that's what we do. Josh says, I recently replaced the drain that goes in the bathtub. And I noticed when I run water in the tub, it leaks into my basement ceiling. Anything you recommend to check? Yeah. Uh, I would check the shoe, check the tub drain itself. Did you put a gasket between the shoe and the tub? And did you put putty around the drain before you screwed it down in there? There's lots of different, uh, and there's really not. There's different ways it can be put together, but really that is the right way to put it together. And if you're not doing that, it can cause leaks. Alex says, what are your thoughts on guys who use the excuse, yeah, doing it right takes too long. And there's only one way to do it, and that is to do it right. George Phillips says, Roger, how hard did it take to get you where you are today? And, and, and I love this question because, George, here's the deal. It, 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 it did take a little while, but it took me 40 years to get 40 years experience. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I really wish I would have started educating myself and trying to learn more, God, 40 years ago. Once I got my license, I got real complacent. I had a lot of jobs. Then when I got in the union, I started trying to grow and move up and learn more and get more endorsements and licenses 
and skills and get a degree in construction management, become a lead AP, become a Green Plumber USA. And at one point in the union, I was making double scale. Meaning when scale was $25 an hour, I was making 50. And it was because of the value that I brought to my companies. And I just really do wish that I'd have started doing that sooner than I did. But I got to tell you, it, it pays off. So how hard did it take me to get to where I'm at today? It, it didn't take, it wasn't too terribly hard. But I will tell you, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm trying to find out. There we go. Noah says, if my TMP valve is leaking, should I replace her just the whole water here? Okay, I already talked about that one. I, I tell you what, and, and I, and I want to go back because, George, here, here's one thing that I want you to think about. And, and this is something that I, I talked about in, in my video today. And, and it was the, the very last thing. And, and this is going to be a good video. Of the, the five best plumbing tips and tricks to help make more money or to make you more money. And at the very bottom, don't know if y'all can read that or not. Probably not. I know there's a glare in there. Always try to be the best. And th the reason that I have that there is from a Seth Godin book, The Dip. And Seth Godin talks about if you're going to learn something and if you're going to do something, why wouldn't you try to be the very best? And he talks about like law clerks, people that are going to school as as lawyers and the ones that really try to be the best i mean some of these attorneys get a two hundred thousand dollar signing bonus and if you can get certain positions it i mean you, you've already got a, a guaranteed slot at a great job and the people that try to be the best and i mean think about it if you're going through phcc or you're going through the United Association, the training program, they have an apprentice competition everywhere, every year. And I think that's huge. If I'm so competitive, if I'd have gone through the apprentice training program, I would have tried to be the apprentice of the year every year because I always wanted to be the best. I always wanted to work harder than everybody else. And to me, if you're not trying to be the best, why not? If you're just trying to be, Mediocre, man, there's a million mediocre people out there. Try a little bit harder, be the best. You'll earn more money. I mean, think about it. When I tell Amber, hey, show me resumes for plumbers, I say, show me the best plumbers. Don't show me a half-wit plumber. Show me the best plumbers. When we were looking for a new CSR, a customer service rep, Amber went through resumes. I didn't say, hey, send me the worst five. Send me the middle five. I said, look, I want to see the very best because that's what I want. So, man, think about that because that really is a big, big deal. Huh. Okay, I'm going to answer a question, but I want to jump over here and pull up a banner first. Uh, and I pulled this up for a reason. Kevin says, follow-up question. Thank you for your answer. What do you think about TikTok? If y'all have not followed me on TikTok, go over there and check it out. Uh, I got to tell you, we're doing TikTok pretty good. In the last four months, uh, we have grown from zero to over 200,000 followers. And I got to tell you, it, it's pretty cool. We're at 203,000. And literally, we've been doing it for four months. We've got 203,000 followers. We've got 2.1 million likes. I think TikTok's great. I think TikTok lets me get information out a different way to a different group, to a different community, but it's still getting my information out there. So I love it, Kevin. I think it's a great idea, and it has helped us quite a bit. Richard Nielsen says, Ready Temp uses an Intel CERT to prevent pipes from freezing on open loop circulation system. Why isn't this more popular in the trade? You know, I really don't know because, you know, in some of it, you can't circulate like a frost proof that somebody leaves, leaves a hose hooked up to, that there's no circulation there because it's a dead end line. 
But I think that there are possibilities and options to, you know, create something like that. I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I don't know about that system. I will try to to mark that and get back in here and look at it because I think that we do need something like that. Muhammad says, what are the ups and downs of being an apprentice? Man, I got to tell you, if there's any apprentices in here, y'all answer this question. And the reason I say it, I can tell you the ones that I think. I, I think it would be, the downside would be, you've got to go to school. You, you've got to learn. You, you, you've got to give up nights to go to school while your family is at home, whether in the UA or the or PHCC or whatever. But what are the benefits of it? You're building yourself a life that, that a lot of people are never going to have. You can become a journeyman plumber or a master plumber, a, a company owner, and, and you can live in the top 10 to 20% of the people in the United States. What do you want to do? Because to me, that makes it well worth it. Sorry about that. I needed a water break. Amber would be proud of me for hydrating. I'm about tired of mice or mouses and batteries and trying to find out where my cursors are. I can see them sometimes and sometimes they just friggin' disappear. <clears throat> Cassie and Alexander Becker says, hey, did you think I'm making a video with Colin Furs at some time? I'll tell you what, I, and I don't know if you know, do you know Colin Furs used to be a plumber? I would love to make a video with Colin. Man, he is one of the smartest guys. He has done some really cool stuff. I just, I love his channel. I think he's phenomenal. I love the fact that he used to be a plumber. So, man, have I thought about it? Absolutely. Would I do it? Absolutely. His channel is cool, and he really does some neat stuff. Nathan Brown says, it's always been this way since we moved to this house four years ago. I live in New Jersey, and I'm finishing my senior year in high school. We'll be attending tech school for auto mechanics afterwards. Thanks for the help, and keep up the awesome and informative videos. Well, number one, Nathan, thank you. I appreciate you being in here and jumping in and asking questions. Sanj says, basement toilet get clogged using plunger, it drains, but those water then water accumulates back up drain, still the toilet is clogged. If you're in a basement, I don't know if you've got an ejector pump or what, you might check that out. Uh, and if it's clogged and it may, may take more than a plunger, you may need a closet auger, you may need something like that. I'm going to jump back over here in the comments for just a minute. There we go. Steve says, I'm going to set some time aside, send you some pictures that should give you a couple hours of videos. I love it. Uh, guys, any, any of y'all that, that hadn't done it, let me see if I can. I may already be up. Uh, there we go. This is my subreddit. So, you know, go over here, check it out. And like Steve talked about, put in pictures, put in videos. That's where we get information from for a lot of our stuff. And it makes it pretty cool. Uh, I am trying to find where I was. It looks like I may have had a. Super chat go by. If so, man, I am sorry. Leave me a comment and tell me. Because <clears throat> now I don't see it. All right. Greetings from Canada. Love your channel. I love that. Yeah, cigarette busts don't go down the toilet drain. Richard Kane, do you have any advice for replacing a water heater? Keep up the entertaining and informative videos. Yeah, man, if it needs to be replaced, don't, don't waste time trying to fix it. If you're doing it yourself, make sure that you buy a brand name water heater, a good one that works. I saw somebody post something earlier asking me what I thought of. Uh, Bradford White, I think Bradford White makes one of the best water heaters that there is. That's what we use and recommend and sell. So, yes. <clears throat> so, Adonis, 
says, I'm a second year apprentice in New York City, currently doing service. And a lot of guys are telling me to go to new construction. Why is that? They say, I won't learn as much as service. And, and Adonis, the funny thing is, I would tell you just the opposite. I think in service, you'll learn more. There's a lot of guys that get used to doing just construction. And construction has a completely different mindset. You've got to look at how to design the system, how to size the system properly, things like that. As a service technician, you have to come in and analyze the system to figure out where the problems are, what's causing certain problems, and what you can do to fix them. So I see both sides of it. Luckily for me, I've done it all. So I'm kind of back and forth. I really, man, I, I really just, I, I love service because I get to deal with the homeowner and talk to them. And that's normally who's getting ripped off by plumbers. So it really is a big deal to me. Troop 210 says, you got the Navy SEALs of plumbing watching you. Salute to you, Roger. Thank you very much. There you go. You want to become a tuber turd? That's where you do it. Kyle Yoakum, I'm seven years into the trade. Best life decision I ever made. Amen. Mark Norris says, have you ever invented a tool? I've got two or three that I've invented. I hadn't done anything with it yet, but I'm talking with companies to help me build it and get it on the market. Marcus says, is it tough to be a plumber? It, it's not as tough as it would be to be an electrician. I say that because... I was actually working on a gas water heater the other day, and I went to pull off uh, the cover over the thermostat and the heating element, and, man, shocked the mess out of myself. And I don't like that, so I think that's funny. All right, back in the forum. Nolan says, I was wondering if you looked up the house built by students from MBIT in Bucks County. I have not. If you'll go to the subreddit and put pictures or a link in there, I will definitely check that out. Any of y'all that aren't members of the subreddit, man, go over there and join. Uh, Sean helps me with that. He puts in some great information over there all, all the time. Uh, Liz posts to it. We, we do a lot of cool things over there. But the neatest thing about it all is, man, it's all supplied by all y'all. So pictures, videos, and it's not just plumbing. We've had people put in great pictures of electrical work, things like that. Neat thing I would tell you is, man, get over there, join, check it out. If you see stuff you like, leave comments. If you see stuff you think we need to put in a video, let us know about that too. Richard Kane says, do you have any advice for replacing a water heater? Eight years old. Spotted a leak last week. Thank you very much. Yeah, try to replace it with a name brand. If yours is still under warranty, see if it's covered. If it's not uh, and you think you can do it yourself, man, uh, I think that's phenomenal. Make sure you pull permits and get it inspected just to, keep, just to protect you. Sean Charles says, I'm 16, interested in plumbing, but horrible at math. Is math important in plumbing? If so, is it difficult? It is important because you're going to have to know how long to cut things, how to read a tape measure, how to add and subtract some stuff. It's nothing crazy. And if you go to work for a plumber that or a plumbing company that is involved with PHCC or the union, you're going to have a math teacher that will help teach you that stuff. And construction math really, man, it's really not too bad. Matt Miller says, Roger, why do you differ differentiate between Upanor and PEX? PEX, Upanor is PEX A. Yes. Here's the thing. I like the expansion fittings because the Upanor fittings are full size. I don't like the crimpering fittings because they're a size smaller, and that's why I differentiate. So it, it's just me personally. I've had to go in too many houses and redo some of the PEC system because they created such a flow restriction that you couldn't get enough flow at a shower head. And, and literally we just had to go in and redo a lot of the system. And I hate that. I wish plumbers would learn to start up sizing it or use Upanor because it's full line size. Uh, 
I tried that one. Okay, it says, Roger mentioned in his response that plumbing would not be a great career for me, even though my father's a certified plumber. Look, my father could be a brain surgeon. Doesn't mean I'm going to be good at it. But George, I don't know why I mentioned that it wouldn't be good for you. Plumbing is good for anybody. Anybody that thinks they can do the work, anybody that has the mindset to learn it. And like I was talking about a while ago, anybody that is always trying to be the best they can. And I think it's fine. I've never seen CPVC sleeved with copper. Wow. Mark sa Marcus says only six to eight years on a central water heater. Mine's at 21 years now, still going fine, having it descaled every five years or so. And I've got a descale system on mine. Uh, so hopefully this one will last longer than the last one. But normally six to eight, maybe 10 years, that's about what they're good for. Back in the forum, if y'all have any questions, please jump over in the forum, fill them out. Josh says, do you ask your apprentices for the pipe stretcher or shrinker uh, to bust their chops all in fun? You know, I, I really, I don't. Uh, I've been on jobs that we did. We'd have the apprentices doing, you know, catch a goose all day. You send them out for stuff that they're in. But, you know, I see the fun in it, but I also, I want to spend time educating them and helping them grow. Abigail says, how do water heaters get recycled? Uh, you can, we actually put ours out by the dumpster. There's a recycling guy that comes up, picks them up and takes them down actually to a metal recycling place. And I think that's a huge deal. Let's see if you know this Ferguson TV reference, Bawoosh. Was it true that their old toilets used a lot of water? All right, here's the deal. All old toilets used a lot of water. I used to remember that when toilets had a five to seven gallon flush on the tanks, and when you started talking to people about taking it down to, what I think it went straight down to 1.9, uh, maybe it was two gallons, then 1.6, 1 1.28. By, by the time then, by the time it got down to that, people were like, that's not a lot enough water to flush it, but it is. And Sean's right, side worker here, here will get you fired. Uh, side work, something I never really wanted to do. <laughs> Sean says here to ride on Roger's coattails. You know, hey, I do get him followers. So speaking of, since he said that, if y'all have not followed Sean on Instagram or me, jump over to Instagram and follow boom underscore. The plumber, boom, the plumber. Sean, put a link in there to it if you can. Plumbers do hate galvanized pipe just because of the electrolysis. Can plumbers fix gas, water heater, backdraft issues, or is that HVAC? Plumbers can normally do that. Wanted to go help that guy. Man, we all want to go help everybody. 20 plus leaks is crazy. Aaron just left the house. They did a great job. Which Aaron? I've got two Aaron's. Do you have any advice for replacing a water heater? Richard, we've talked about that one all evening. Yes, we do. Get your boy the hookup. There you go. Best plumbing companies in Fort Worth. Man, that's a good question. Not us yet. We're, if Sean will ever come down here, we can expand west. We'll do that. We're not there yet, but we are looking at it. We, we eventually want to have the best plumbing company in the DFW area, and that's what we're trying for. James says, can ABS pipe be joined into PVC, purple primer, and glue? No. Yes. How you like that? You got both answers. There's a transition glue. You still have to use primer, but you may have to make sure that you get a glue. There is a glue that you can use to glue ABS to PVC, I think, and P CPVC. Richard Call Plumber, I love it. Time to get wet. Licky here. My friend, Miss Juliet Miranda, is in the house. That's another one. If you have not subscribed to Juliet Miranda, she will go live here in about two hours and she will be talking about bourbon. Actually, she will be ranting about bourbon. 
she does some cool stuff. So definitely go over there, subscribe, and check her out. Coda Fox says, so what's the area of your company? I travel all over DFW, never see your trucks. We don't go to Fort Worth very much. Normally, we we focus in Richardson, Plano, Dallas, Addison, you know, kind of this high five, or not really high five, the, the George Bush 75 area. We try to hang out all around it. There's, there it is again, guys. If y'all have not seen Juliet Miranda's channel, man, go subscribe, go check it out. It really is. She's fun to watch. Sean Zeiss says, hey, Roger, I'm thinking about removing a small bathroom of mine and was curious on your take on it. Should I put a wall-mounted toilet on an exterior wall? I live in Minnesota. I have two by six walls. I'm a little hesitant since it gets cold here, but just curious your thoughts. If I was in Minnesota, I don't know that I'd have anything on an exterior wall. I would always try to put everything towards the interior. But as long as you know it, you know you're putting it on an exterior wall, you know, you could always, if it's wall mounted, I don't know if they, is it a tank top or a commercial flush valve top? You know, you may be able to go in there and crack that open to where it runs continuously to keep it from freezing. And that may help you out a lot. Uh, here we go. Jimmy Drama says, place to be taught. Week number five in my plumbing course. Thanks from Sweden. Man, Jimmy, I hope things are going well over there. Hope you're doing good in Sweden. And man, keep jumping in every now and then. Let me know how you're doing, uh, how you like the plumbing, what all you're learning. Just curious. That could really be great stuff. Go to Fox. We're in North Texas. North Dallas. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Hello, Juliet. Strong, strong. It's better than taking two hours to find the 95V stop box. Towards Dallas, that's what I ask. UX Dale says, I love your channel. I could possibly be a plumber with what I learned from your videos. That's the only reason Sean Strong is a plumber. Really, before I met him, he was a gynecologist, but he's learned so much in here. Now he's a plumber. Way to go, Sean. Put something in the sub right there. You go. There you go, right there. I I tell you what. Uh, actually, Steve, contact me and I'll give you a call because Dr. Richard is actually flying into Dallas tonight. Uh, he'll be landing here in about an hour and a half. I've got him meeting with a couple of groups tomorrow, so definitely looking forward to it. Okay, here's a good one. Have you ever had a mowing core puller snap the brass stub on the cartridge and have to replace the entire valve? Taylor, I'm a little different than you. I'm freaking hard-headed. When mine broke that, what I did, I literally took needle nose and started peeling apart the inside of it. Then I got, I believe it was a three-quarter inch drill bit, drilled the inside of it out, got in there, scored that to where I could pull it apart. I did not replace the cartridge. I'm sorry. I did not replace the valve. I was able to keep working on it until I got every piece of that cartridge out and it came out in about a hundred little pieces, but I got it done. Children sucks. <laughs> Love the name of the channel. Uh, never thought I'd be actively watching a plumber Q and a, but here I am. Welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Uh, what is Roger? Okay, I already talked about that. Clock is fine. CST. Let's so know how that happened. And I'm going to scroll down. Actually, I'm going to jump back over in the form real quick. We're about to get to the end of the questions, which is good. I want to remind everybody, we do have a video going live at 545, 45 minutes from now. And if y'all would, go in, like it, share it, comment about it. Uh, we changed to this new time because it tells me most of my viewers are on YouTube from like 6 to 8, 6 to 9. So we thought, you know what, we're going to post a video right before they get on, see what happens. Try it out. See what we think. Sean says, I'd rather tell, I'm a rather tall teenager standing at 6'3". It's tall disadvantage for a plumbers. Sean, I would have to say it's an advantage. 
uh, you're going to be in position where you can see things that other plumbers may not be able to see. If you're tall, I don't know if you're tall and slender or what, uh, you know, crawling around under houses as a tall person can be beneficial. Getting into certain positions, uh, man, there's just, there's a lot of different things. I don't see anything bad about it. So man, don't let that stop you. Where was I headed? I had seen one that I wanted to pop up. All Might says is math difficult in plumbing. It man, look, we're plumbers. We're not rocket scientists, so it's really not that hard. Uh, it's really not that bad. It man, really, it just it, it's math. It's the good thing is if you get into the PHCC or the union or somebody, you're gonna have people that can teach you. Uh, Richard Nielsen says, How can we contact you outside of the live forums? Uh, you can always go to Roger Wakefield posts on subreddit. Send me a message there. It's a great place. Guys, y'all can connect with me. Here, I'll, I'll go through my banners real quick because this is something. Okay, number one, there, there's the subreddit right there. Uh, we're also over on TikTok. We're also over on Twitter. We're also over on Instagram. We're also over on Facebook. And this may be the best place, LinkedIn. Uh, we literally, man, we, we, we are in a lot of places. We're doing a lot of things, but I got to tell you, it's, it's wonderful because we're growing on so many different platforms that man, things are looking wonderful. Uh, you know, those college star athletes for, yeah, for, fourth grade level of reading and math. Yeah. They could be plumbers too. Uh, plumbing it. And the plumbing and math really isn't that hard. Uh, Chris Webb says, do you still teach the CE classes at UA 100? I don't. Uh, the UA doesn't like me for some reason. Can't figure it out. But it it is what it is. I don't worry about it. Uh, trying to scroll through here real quick. Here we go. All my, it says, I'm 15, interested in plumbing electrician, but what scares me is math. Since I entered middle school till now, a sophomore in high school, math has been a struggle for me. You know, the good thing is, and, and I'll tell you this, when it comes to plumbing, you're, you're talking about a very specific niched down math. You need to learn a little bit about fractions and decimals, but it's not a ton. And the good thing is with the right calculator, you get a construction pro calculator and it can pretty much do everything for you. It's, it's not a bad deal either. Back over into the forum. Mia Joe Bro says, how about warming water and campers? Maybe flow warmer or gas? Which one will be better? You know what? I don't know if Neil the Urban Explorer is still in here or not. Neil has a van that he lives in doing different things, stuff like that. He has I think he has hot water and he he runs water in his vans, so he would be the one to contact. Okay, so Roger, you should watch Ross Creations video. He released a video today, pretty funny toilet prank. I will have to check that out. Uh, Mark H says, first time being out of work, electrician, early enough to watch one of these live. I love it. Definitely should have been a plumber. Awesome videos. You're making the trades interesting for people to learn about. Mark, thank you so much. Look, I, I love the trades, all the trades. I, I, I think plumbing's the best, but it's just because I'm a plumber. But it, it, it's kind of neat. Here you go. Said so Ali Ashkar, LOL, what's, what's this all about? Uh Man, this is all about plumbing. The cool thing about it is I'm a plumber, been plumbing for over 40 years. I help people get in the trades, help people at the trades get better, help tradespeople open their own company and help them learn social media to help grow their business. So all kinds of cool things. Yeah, Sean, I've had to work in a, a motor home before and I didn't really like that either. 
Jason says, what is the proper way to remove a union? Mine is steel with large hex and middle and one upper hex, one lower hex. Do I use one wrench to hold the lower hex and unscrew the union with the large hex and center? Yeah, but, and, th and this really is a good question, Jason. You need to look and see on the two small hexes, which one has the threads on it that the big nut is on. Because one of them has female threads. One of them has male threads. The big nut has the female threads. You need to look at the two smaller hex nuts. And I guess the best way to do it is look at the outside of the big nut and see where the furthest out circle is because that's going to screw around the male threads. It's going to have a smaller circle on the inside where it's just turning on the other hex. So that may be the best way to put it. That was a tough way to think about that. But that that's good. Jason, I hope that helps you out. James says, any recommendations for a water softener? Do you recommend an all-in-one contained unit or traditional with an external standalone filter? Huh. This is actually the video that we did today. So this is the Watts Pure HTO, the OneFlow Plus. This has a water filtration cartridge and a scale reduction cartridge. So this helps reduce scale and filters water all at the same time. Cool thing about this, this is designed for a whole house installation. It has 10 GPM max flow rate. The water filter cartridge, you change once a year. The scale reduction cartridge, you change once every three years. And I got to tell you, this, this is really, and it's pretty neat. And, and it's so cool that you asked that because, I mean, literally, we just did this video today. And the neat thing about it, I mean, it, it's not hard to get into. You've got an outlet fitting over here that, that goes into the top of the cartridge. So the water comes in, goes down around everything and gets filtered. There is your scale reduction cartridge. And then inside you have a water filtration cartridge. So I got to tell you, I was really impressed looking through this, studying it and, and checking things out. But I mean, you look how easy I just took everything in, put everything or took everything out, put everything back in and if you install this and put valves on each side, it's going to make it where it's really easy to get to, really easy to, to get in there and change the filters. And like I said, you only do that once a year, once every three years. And that was neat because it's literally just hanging on the wall over here because we showed how to install it today too. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of cool. Let's see something real quick. Okay, our TikTok has slowed down a little bit. We're only up to 203,000 subs now. Uh, but that's a cool deal. I'll tell you what. I've, I've got a girl working on my TikTok, Elizabeth, and, man, she is doing fantastic. All right. Let me see here. I'll jump over in the chat for just a minute. Maybe. Here's a good one. Nightbot says the subreddit is now open. Guys, go check this out. Share it with some plumber friends. Sean, brother, I know how you feel. A uh, link to the forum, Josh Baxter, Campbell Mobile Homes. Yeah, you're right. They suck. Big Tom Lynch. Love the YouTube channel. Enjoy plumbing. Use your videos to help my guys at work. You know, that's a neat thing because I get messages from apprentices all the time that say, hey, look, just want you to know my instructor at the union or, or PHCC or whatever shows your videos all the time. I, I think that is fantastic. I love that they are using my videos to, to instruct and help. We spend a lot of time making sure we're making the right video, and I always want to bring value to people. So, Big Tom Lynch, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. 
I've got a company in Houston that has told me they have a bonus plan set up for their apprentices. They've got to watch so many videos each week or each month. They've got to answer questions on it. They, they've got to do all kinds of things. So I think that is fantastic. With steam, we can always put steel unions with the bubble going with the flow. Uh, what am I jump down to here, here? Let me do this one here first. Uh, Taste of Bags says, about to go out on my own with one employee. There is a new home builder needing my service. I'm a little nervous because of new homes. Heard the money isn't good. What are your thoughts? I, I would tell you this, and, and I learned this. You know, I'm involved with a group called SGI, Success Group International. Neat thing about it, they have plumbers, electricians, roofers, and HVAC techs, and they teach us the things to help us grow our companies. One thing they tell you is, look, the money's in service. Now, I'm not saying you can't make money in a new build. But down here in Texas, I've got to compete with everybody who has apprentices out doing all the work. And I've got to compete with them fighting and cutting each other's throats to lower the pricing. My thing is most people that want service, they want it done right. They want it done by people they trust. So SGI has taught me how to set my pricing, create my budgets to where I can make money. And the good thing is, we get paid when we do the work. You don't have to wait 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I would not want to do new builds, but, you know, man, that's up to you. Will you be at the wet show in June? Andy, i tell you what, uh, and those of y'all that don't know, Sean Strong mentioned the wet show here a while back, and I've always wanted to go to the wet conference. So I reached out to them, talked to them. They had me do some video at it, and I actually did a session and you can probably go check the WET Plus conference. They had me do a session on using social media to make your phone ring. So, Andy, I'll tell you this. I enjoyed it. If you saw my video or you saw the one that I did for the break, the, the, the funny one, let me know what you thought about it. And you, Sean, whoever, if you're in here and you saw what I did on WET and you liked it, contact WET and let them know. Say, hey. Roger was fantastic. You know, we'd love to see him at the conference. They have spoken with me about possibly going to Indianapolis and doing that. I would love to. And if they get feedback from people saying it was good, I'm sure that they will. Liked and voted. Okay, thumbs up, everybody. That's what it's all about. I love it. Pawandeep says... New plumbing apprentice, unsure about what drill bits and driver bits to get. You never made a video on the bits and driver sets that plumbing apprentices might need. Man, I could make a video on everything in the world a plumbing apprentice may need, and, and I could I could have a new video every year or every day of every year. Here, here's what I'll tell you. Always have a nice assortment. Always try to have a brand name. That way, chances are it won't break. If it does, you can replace it. And man, just look at what the other plumbers and apprentices have in their bags or in their tools that they're using. I think it'll make all the difference in the world. Sean Strong says, doing new construction, you have to know your price for material and labor and always get change orders. And, and that's a great thing to think about because, you know, everybody thinks, you know, hey, look, you're going to go and give them a price. It's going to be amazing. You're going to do wonderful, yada, yada, yada. And, and I hate to tell you, it doesn't always work that way. Change orders can save your life or they can kill you. Philip says, whatever want to become a jack of all trades. Uh, number one, George, and, and, and I think I am a jack of all trades, master of one. I'm a certified HVAC technician. I'm a pretty good frame carpenter. Uh, a lot of things I don't want to do, would never want to do. But I really do enjoy plumbing. And that's why I got into it. That's why I've stuck with it. You know, the, the thing that I'll tell you, becoming a jack of all trades, and I have people send me messages all the time, say, look, I've thought about becoming a plumber. I've thought about becoming an electrician. I've thought about becoming an HVAC tech. The thing I'll tell you is I wish I had all three endorsements. I'd love to open an electrical division, but I don't want to have to rely on a master electrician. 
And yes, Bargain Dog, I am an HVAC technician. We don't do HVAC, but I have that endorsement or not endorsement. I have that state license in Texas. I don't have the master license, so I can't go out and, and pull my own permits and do installs. I got my HVAC certification and I've never really used it. I did it in case I wanted to open an HVAC division one day and one day I may, but right now we're doing good. Just doing plumbing. Chris Taylor says, how would I remove a blockage of silicone from a piping system or would it be easier to replace the segment of pipe? It depends on where it's located. If you get the right auger bit or the right bit on a sewer machine, you may be able to cut it loose, flush it out. You may be able to push it out with a hydro jetter if you can get it in the right spot. And you may be able to get a camera and hydro jetter in there together where you can see what it's doing. So the opportunity is, is really good to get in there and look at it and try. That'd be fun either way. Back in the forum. Any tips for dealing with building department inspectors and permits? Number one, be nice. And the reason I say that is, look, inspectors are a pain, especially when you get one that has certain things and details they want done a certain way, yada, yada, yada. What I'll tell you is trying to be nice to them and deal with them and work with them is always going to help you. City permit departments, look, I grew up in Garland, Texas. Garland, Texas is the worst place on earth to have to go down and talk to them. You've got to sit in a line with about 50 people. They are in no hurry. This is the worst city to, to, to pull permits and, and need help down at the permit department in. They just don't care. They're in no rush. They don't worry about customer service. They don't worry about getting you taken care of. And, and seriously, we charge people in Garland more because it's going to be a pain. I hate saying that, but we know that if we've got to go to the city, it's going to take an extra couple of hours. And you've got to look at that when you're budgeting your jobs and pricing your jobs. Is there a real shortage of material in Texas right now? DJ Chino, right now there is. Reason being with all the floods and, and pop ruptures and everything we've had in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, there is. It's starting to get better. Some of us plumbers like me, I saw what was coming. I ordered materials out of California before it got bad. We've already got them in here. So things are going, going great. And DJ says he's a plumber himself. I love that. Life expectancy of three quarter inch PVC buried 16 inches underground. Mad Saint Media. I really think life expectancy of PVC, even if it's buried underground, there's nothing that should really bother it. I say you're probably good for 50, 60, maybe 50 to 100 years. Chris Taylor says, have you been to the UK? And if so, does the plumbing systems have major differences? I have not been there. I do want to go to compare. I'd love to find a plumber or plumbing company over there. And, and actually, me and Plumber Parts have been talking about doing something together. I would love that because I'd like to compare stuff and, and see, what, see what the big difference is. Chris says, been doing new construction plumbing 10 years. How do I go about furthering my education so I'm not busting my hump? Learning construction management, learning leadership skills. Uh, man, we talked about a lot of this earlier. Uh, leadership skills are going to help you, but getting up every morning and studying 30 minutes to an hour about your trade, new tools, new equipment, new technology, anything like that, it's going to help you do good. Taste of Bags says, thank you for your advice. The reason for new homes, because it's steady work to start uh, with an employee's great apprentice in need of leaving our current boss. I get it. Uh, here's what I'll tell you is maybe you start out with new homes, but you start looking at building your, your, your tools, your equipment to do service work build a website, 
advertise, let people know you're a residential service plumber, I think you'll make more money in the long run, and I think you'll love it. Cordero Man says, hello, Texas man. Hello, how are you? Briar, any tips to get started with a plumbing business? Absolutely. Number one, I've got a lot of videos about it, but man, start looking at what you can do to get your name out there. How do you do it? And man, I mean, it's, it's a long list of things to do. That's what we've made the videos for. But man, to get started, the first thing you've got to do is get people out there so you can make that phone ring. That is huge. Plumbing in Europe is much more efficient. I believe that. Customer asked us to insulate a underground four inch cast iron sewer line. Do you typically do that? No, we don't typically do it. But I'll tell you what, anytime a customer asks us to do something, that there's a price for it, we can do it. Marcus says, if you're ever in Germany, feel free to come by. Got all kinds of plumbing styles the last 60 years of my house. That's kind of funny. Matt Sates says, thanks for the answer. I hated digging that trench. Uh, my hand for a half a mile into the woods. Didn't want to have to go back anytime soon. Man, I don't blame you. Now, if you have a leak in any of those joints, and the trees or, or big plants out there, anything can detect water. It will penetrate it. If there's any leak at all, it will penetrate it. And you, you, you'll have problems from that. Just so you know. And I can't find my mouse again. There we go. Okay, already answered that one. So that's good. Matthew says, hi, Roger, just had to call a plumber. <clears throat> they want a $75 service fee if they go out and don't do the work. What are plumbers' rationale for this again? Well, Matthew, here's the deal. Number one, me, the plumbing company owner, I have to pay that plumber to come out and see you. So he needs to get out, look at it, give you an evaluation, see what all it's going to take to do it. That plumber's drug tested, background check. He's driving a van worth about $100,000 with materials and equipment, stuff like that to do the job. We charge a service fee. Uh, we charge $75, 75 or 79. Plus, we've got a $20 uh, fuel truck charge for gas, wear and tear on the truck, gloves, expenses for COVID, stuff like that, stuff that, I mean, we've never had before. Prices are going up in Texas for gas right now because supply and demand. There, there weren't they weren't able to get gas trucks out in the last couple of weeks. So there's a lot of problems there. It uh it happens, man. Seventy five dollar service fee to me is well worth it. If you get a plumber out that knows what he's doing, he's going to give you a fair evaluation, <clears throat> and then he's going to give you a price to do it. And, and look, I, I don't consider that as mocking or anything like that. We do it. People that tell us we don't want to pay that, okay, you don't have to. You can call somebody else. I don't know that they're sending out licensed plumbers that really know what they're doing. And, man, I'm sending out the best plumbers, and, and I've got plumbers and apprentices. I've got to pay for that van and those two people to go out there. And to be honest, even at $99, that normally doesn't cover it but at least it keeps us from losing a lot of money. What math should I expect on the plumber's aptitude test for the apprenticeship? Should be simple math, maybe fractions, decimals, maybe converting, something like that. Normally it's nothing crazy. What are different types of equipment that are really beneficial to the plumbing trade? Really, it's just tools, equipment, material, and it depends on what kind of job you've got, what kind of company you want to have. The neat thing about it is sewer machines, sewer cameras, stuff like that for service, but if you're doing new construction, you'll never need that. So, Hunter, you need to look at what, what it is you're going to be doing, how you're going to be doing it, and, and, and see what, the, what you need there. 
you need to have a high IQ to become a tradesman, but the average tradesman is in the 93 to 95 percent percentile with an IQ score of 98. And George, I don't know what the averages are. I know that my IQ is very high, but I really don't see that that has a lot of of it involved to I don't think you got to be smart to be a plumber because I know some plumbers that just really ain't very smart. And when I was an instructor in the union, I knew plumbers, apprentices, pop fitters, and welders that couldn't do the math. But we were able to teach them. So I think that I think that there's an opportunity there for anybody that wants to do better. Matthew Harder says, when will you open a branch in Central Texas? Matthew, what part of Central Texas are you in? Julie and I, we, we own Master Networks, uh, a networking company. We own the the Central Texas region and, and the Houston area. And so I'm actually like Thursday, I'm flying down to Austin. Friday morning, I've got a meeting in Belton. Friday evening, I've got a taco happy hour in Austin. And then, man, I think I'm just going to hang out in Austin and relax. <clears throat> Sean says they have an $80 service fee. Most companies really, and, and, and look, Matthew, I, I don't want this to throw you off or anything, but most, most companies that are worth a dang have a service fee, and it, it is to get rid of a, a, a lot of people that are just, look, I'm going to call 10 different plumbers and have them all come out and give me prices and then call the cheapest one. Because I tell people in the beginning, guys, I'll tell you right now, I'm not the cheapest plumber. We do things right. I hire the best plumbers. We use the best equipment. We use the best materials. I have the best leak detection equipment that there is. I can't have all that and be the cheapest plumber in town. And I just tell them flat out, if you're just calling me about pricing, I'm probably not your guy. But if you're calling me because you want it done right and you want the best plumbers out there, we can talk about it now. Uh <clears throat> I like this, DJ Chino, you're right. Service plumbing teaches you lessons every day. It's something different. New construction is a drill. Uh, yeah, drill and keep it moving. And, and new construction, don't get me wrong, I, I've learned a lot in new construction and I've done both. But you know, the, the funny thing is you can get stuck in that rut in construction where it's the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. So you're right. Sean says, my tattoo artist charges $100 minimum for the first hour. You know, everybody's got it. Have you had someone catch the coronavirus and what precautions do you and your guys take? I've had it. Julie's had it. One of my plumbers has had it. Two of them had strep throat. We, man, we, we socially distance as much as we can. Uh, some of the plumbers wear masks in. Whenever we go to people's houses, I tell my guys, always treat the house you walk in like the people there have it. And if you're looking at it that way and being safe that way, you're going to be okay. Louis M says, Hey Roger, I'm 23 years old, looking to get into plumbing in San Diego. Do you recommend waiting on trade school, ABC, or do you suggest another method to start your plumbing apprenticeship? Louis, I would check with PHCC. I would check with ABC. I would check with United Association. First of all, go to my channel and take the free mini course, meaning go down in the description of this video, look for the free mini course. It's going to help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. Do you want to be residential or commercial, new construction or service? What do you want to do? And it'll help you figure that out. Once you figure that out, then watch one of my videos that tell you how to get into the trades as that top plumber. If it's residential service, you may not want to go to the union. You may not want to go to ABC or PHCC. If it's commercial, you may just want to go straight to any one of those. So there's lots of different ways to look at it. Just check it out. T1 Savage, I am doing fine. <clears throat> Brendan Jones says, Roger, looking to start a business in Costa Rica. Man, good for you. Uh, and you need a plumber? I may come down there and work for you. Here's another good one too. Brendan Jones says, says, how important is buying good tools for general plumbing? I, I love the fact that, look, Rigid, Milwaukee, DeWalt make some great tools. If you can't afford those, go to Ferguson and, and look at 
the Raptor tools, something like that. They've been sending me a lot of those to try. And I got to tell you what, and these are some good tools that have a great guarantee. And I think that's phenomenal. I actually reached back out to Ferguson and said, hey, look, I'd like to do a giveaway on some Raptor tools because I think it's fantastic. Jumping Cheeseburger says, is it normal for your local unions to require training and welding before becoming a plumber? Normally not. Matthew Harder says, where could one go to learn plumbing? Like to have a learned skill under my belt. You know, to, to be honest, you can pretty much watch YouTube these days and learn it. If you're not going to do it as a career, that's a great thing to do. If you decide to go to a trade school or something like that or get a job, you know, they're, they're going to bring you in understanding you don't know the trade, but that you're there to learn. So I think it can be great. Lewis, if I'm ever in San Diego, brother, love to have a beer. Uh, actually, in San Diego, I think it's down in the gas lamp area, there's a whiskey bar or a bourbon bar that Julie and I went to when I was down there. Uh, I don't remember what I was there for at the time. Oh, I was there for coaching with Michael Gerber. There's a bourbon bar down there that was just phenomenal and loved it. Gaming with Joe says, Roger, currently 15 years old, planning to become a plumber when I grow up. Good for you. Number one, you're in a great spot. Come in here, watch these videos, watch them and learn. And man, you'll love it. Uh, Matthew Harder says he's in Belton. I'm actually going to be in Belton Friday morning for a Master Networks meeting. Uh, probably not going to drink a beer for breakfast, but uh, I will be there. I think I'm there for at 8.30 to 9.30 Friday morning. Uh, Julie and I both. How many vans? Do you have in work? We've got four plumbing vans running full time right now. I've got four other vans that we just upgraded from. I can always upgrade one of those and, and get a couple of more going if I need to, but that's about what we're doing. Uh, tons of questions left here, guys. I am literally going to have to get to the point where I can shut this thing down. So what I'm going to tell y'all is, number one, thank you all for being here today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you're still here, here in about 15 minutes, we're posting a new video. Do me a favor. Go in there, like that video, share that video, comment on that video. But that's a big deal. Share it. Copy, share, post it to your Facebook page, post it to somewhere that you do social media. Anytime you know somebody that wants to get in the trades, this is a great spot for them to be. So that's what we make these videos for. Helping people get into the trades, helping people get better at the trades, helping people that are in the trades open their own company, and helping trades company owner learn to use social media to grow their business. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. I want to say thanks to the moderators that were in. Uh, everybody, Austin, Liz, Virgil. Grayson, Sean, Neil, the Urban Explorer. And if you didn't do it, jump over and subscribe to Juliet Miranda. Fantastic channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. If you hadn't yet, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.